welcome back. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts, and today is all about the luxurious luxury fiber Kiviet. I was fortunate enough to get some of this amazing uh, Kiviet fiber. Uh, this has already uh, been um, processed. Uh, I went through it uh, and uh, just sort of like floofed it and uh, looked at it picked out any guard hairs. Uh, there were very, very few in this. It is a, a very great prep. This bowl was 10 grams. I just dropped it in here to bring it outside to show you since it's such a beautiful evening. Um, and I've been, um, I wanna spin this. Uh, and if you know, uh, Kiviet is the musk ox and it is uh, extremely warm and soft and downy. Uh, and uh, the way you get the uh, Kiviet fiber uh, is a uh, tan collected the uh, musk ox walks around and it like sticks to the rocks and then you pick it up by hand um, so it's very expensive uh, I wanted to show you what some of the commercial yarn looks like and what you can do with it um, so I got this uh, Kiviet uh, which is commercial and it is a fingering weight it's around a um, 14 uh, to 16 WPI and I bought this at Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool uh, before COVID, so must have been the fall of 2019. Uh, and uh, this is one ounce, and uh, well, this is what's left. I purchased one ounce, and it was over a hundred dollars. I think actually, I think it was ninety-five dollars. And by the time I paid tax on it, it was well over a hundred dollars. Uh, and um, I made this awesome hat, and I still have a little bit left over. Um, this hat is super light and airy, and very very warm. Um, I just wanted to show you the uh, commercial uh, Kiviet, and now what I have purchased, um, and I found this amazing place uh, online. Um, it's uh, called the uh, Miller Girls Luxury Fibers and it's on Facebook and I just kind of stumbled into it and it is amazing uh, and I don't know how they get the prices on these things but this is $45 per ounce so I bought two ounces so I paid $90 for two ounces I paid a hundred and five dollars or something for this one uh, for one ounce so uh, and, and that's already processed so I am perfectly willing to put the time in to have this beautiful Kiviet so the question is what are we gonna do how are we gonna spin this how are we gonna make this magic happen and um, my plan is to actually use this little bit of leftover because you know I'm not wasting a speck of this stuff uh, <laughs> to um, uh, make it the same uh, weight and this is two plied and I've already checked that out I kind of uncoiled a little bit of the end uh, and I measured the WPI so I kind of know what I want to spin and uh, my plan is to decide is it better and there are two different ways you can spin this Kiviet you can spin it from the cloud which is what this is here where you just pull it and floof it up and you um, just, uh, just grab it out of the bowl grab a chunk and spin uh, or we can uh, do a little light combing and turn these into punis. Um, my uh, plan for right now is to do both and uh, show you the difference. I already know what I like um, because I've already tried it and I prefer the puni. It gives me a much smoother spin. Uh, so the, uh, the thing with this is, you know, it is, it's extremely fine fiber. So you don't want to break it and have it get all neppy. So you can't put this in a drum carter. I mean, you can practically see through it. Uh, it is so fine of a fiber. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do is very lightly card this on my cotton carders and um, show you how I make um, a little uh, puni from that. And then that's what I'm gonna spin from. And I'll also do a little bit of spinning straight from the clouds so you can see the difference. Uh, and uh, and the, the whole time I'm doing that, I'll be trying to uh, spin at uh, the right uh, WPI to get me a uh, 16 two-ply fingering weight final yarn so they'll look good together. I'll try not to hit my head on the camera here. I'm trying to get it in good and close so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so these are my um, Ashford uh, cotton carders. And if you're going to uh, do this, you are gonna want a fine uh, card cloth. So this has the uh, TPI is higher. It's, uh, I forget what it is, but they're very close together and fine. Um, if you try to do something with a uh, coarser tine, you're going to get a lot of neps and it's going to break. What I'm going to do is uh, just take some of this uh, fluff here and I'm going to start putting it onto one of my carters. And I start holding my carter in my left hand here. 
and I don't want to lose any of this. So uh, I'm just holding my carter like this and then I am going kind of against the tines and I'm laying this on here. And again, um, this is uh, I'm doing this very light handed. I'm not going heavy handed here. I'm not even trying to cover all the pink like I normally do. I'm kind of famous for making large uh, everything. <laughs> I'm always trying to just get, get as much done as I can at a time. Uh, so uh, I'm just taking these little bits here and I'm going to put them on to my carter. And again, I'm not putting very much of this on at once. And now I'm taking my other carter and what you're going to do is I, I hold the one in my left hand up and the one in my right hand is going to come on top of it and you're making a kind of a, a motion like this that is going to transfer the stuff from this card and put it onto the card in my right hand. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of comb this and again I'm doing this kind of lightly and I don't want to make too many passes on this. Uh, again, very delicate fiber. And uh, I am catching the uh, end of it with the other card. So it should be transferring from the card in my left hand to the card in my right hand. And again, I don't want to comb it too much here. I'm just trying to Keep it nice and light, good. And now you can see now it's all on the card in my left hand. Well, it was in my right hand, now I switched it. Now it's in the left hand. And what I'm going to do is transfer it to this one and then we'll take it off. Um, you can see I have a little bit of shortcuts here on this edge, right along in here. And um, we're gonna see how that works out with this. And again, I'm starting here and I'm just going along that edge. I'm just combing that onto this other card. Very lightly. And it should be pretty easy when it's when it's done here. So there we go. And look, now look at that nice edge. There's none of those neps are there. And look at that. So it's nice and combed. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is then uh, make a, a puni out of this. Uh, the way I do this, I would love to use something smaller than this. Um, this is unfortunately the longest double point I have, <laughs> uh, and uh, or the longest knitting needle I have, and the, the biggest one that I uh, have that's not a circular needle. Uh, so I'm just going to pull this up a little bit to get it started here. And then once I start getting it around, I'm going to slide this little one out, or maybe I'll slide it out at the end. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then I just roll this off and I'm going to ever so lightly just sort of comb it along here. I think this is a good point to take this needle out. So I'm going to remove that little needle that was helping me get started there. I was just using it to kind of hold it. And again, just very lightly along here. I'm not doing anything very tense at all. And there you go. So here's my puny. Now I'm just gonna slide it off the end of my uh, dowel here. And you'll see this is very light and airy. And this is what we're gonna spin from. And I'm just gonna make a bunch of these up and um, we'll go from there and I will show you how to spin it. We are going to start by spinning uh, from the punies that I made. I'm just gonna grab one out of my little basket I have at my foot here. Um, the first thing I do when I'm working with a puny is uh, you want to kind of just uh, loosen it up a little bit. And the way you do that is by just gently rolling it in your hands and that will uh, floof it just lightly back and forth here. And that will help to loosen up some of those fibers inside. Uh, the other thing that you can do is just give it a little tiny stretch here too. Um, and this is something that I do with cotton. I'm not sure how essential it is for a kiviet, but I figure a puni's a puni, so I'll just treat it the same way. Uh, 
I uh, already started uh, spinning, so um, I know that this works. The other thing about a puni, uh, same thing for a roll egg, you'll notice that one end um, will probably feel easier to draft from than the other. Uh, for me, it's this end. I can feel that it's a little looser. So I'm gonna start spinning from this end of the puni. Uh, I've already started um, spinning a couple of these on here. Uh, this is my uh, eel wheel, the eel wheel six um, from uh, Dreaming Robots. So we are going to continue spinning. I just got this um, e-spinner at Sheep and Wool last weekend. So I've been very excited to uh, get started trying something on it. So I think Kiviet is perfect because it's a very fine fiber. Uh, and um, I think that the consistency of the electric uh, spinner is going to be helpful. So uh, this is um, what I have been spinning. I'm going to go ahead and join this using the uh, tried and true hot dog technique where I floof up this end and I left this end intentionally loose when I finished spinning. I'm just gonna lay it over top like this and then you just kind of wrap around it like that. And then as you draw, it's gonna catch the fiber and join. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to talk about here? Every, this is basically like a uh, single drive wheel with um, scotch tension. Uh, so I have a band, a drive band in the front and then the uh, tensioner in the back. And uh, I have the uh, speed already set and I have it set to my Z ply, uh, my Z twist, and we're going to get started. I did already start um, uh, trying to uh, approximate this uh, thickness of uh, yarn here, the uh, 14 to 16 WPI, and um, we'll uh, try to uh, see if I can reproduce a, a sample here to use for my kiviet. Um, and I determined that around a 32 is giving me what I want for this. Uh, I, this also has the luxury of a foot pedal, which is really nice because if you find the right speed that you like on the speed dial here on the right, um, you don't have to mess with it. You just hit the floor pedal and it just turns it on and off for you. So that's what we're going to do. And hot dog technique here, letting that twist come up in. And this is just spinning like butter. My biggest issue is honestly I spin too thin because you could spin this super thin and I'm trying to not spin it actually as thin as I possibly can, which is way thinner than this. So uh, let's uh, do a little quick uh, plyback test here and see what we get. So this is my plyback and this is the yarn that I'm trying to reproduce. And I didn't get lucky. I, I was practicing earlier. So, you know, it did take me a little while to find it. But so 32 is my answer. And um, let, me, uh, let me break this and tie it so we can see it better. So I have my little sample here. Let's see if we can hold this up like this. I think that's probably gonna be my best option. And I have the commercial yarn is on the right and my sample is on the left. And you can see that I think we are hitting it right on the money here. I'm very excited. I think this is gonna be awesome. I really am enjoying the um, the e-spinner and spinning from the puni, it's really nice. I mean, it is super duper soft and um, very easy to control. I wasn't sure what to expect because you know, Kiviet is a very fine fiber, um, but the staple length isn't incredibly short. So. I thought it would be around the same difficulty level to spin as cotton, but it's actually easier. Um, cotton is uh, way more difficult. It requires a lot more twist. I do love this foot pedal too, the turning it on and off so that I don't have to fiddle with the speed. So on my um, Nano, which I also love and use for travel spinning, it does not have a foot pedal. So it is way, way more uh, challenging when you stop with cotton um, you know, to get back up to speed again and then find that speed that you like, but uh, this is really um, nice. I think I'm gonna love this six. And uh, I will show you also the um, spinning from the cloud. Uh, although I did a little bit of that early on and the, the uh, yarn that I got was a lot neppier. Uh, and uh, you know, with the combing really did improve it significantly. Uh, one, for the ease of drafting and spinning and two, um, there's a lot less neps this way. 
apparently they make a auto level winder for this um, e-spinner. So once I get uh, more comfortable with this and further along uh, spinning with it, I might consider getting the auto level winder because boy, I love that auto level winder. It is a great piece of machinery. As long as your, your drafting is consistent, I mean, you're going to get a beautiful yarn because uh, it's exactly the same, you know. I don't treadle at the same speed all the time. I try to, but sometimes I'm a little faster, sometimes a little slower. So that's the advantage. And all I'm doing with this uh, bowl of kiviet is I'm just sort of floofing it up a little bit here. Just like this so that um, it's going to make it very fluffy and cloud-like. And you can just kind of go through and do that with your raw kiviet. Uh, also, you know, if I do see any guard hairs, I'm going to pluck them out. Uh, I think literally I've spun mm, four or five punis so far. And I saw maybe six solo uh, black uh, guard hairs. And that was it. And just pluck those out. Because even though overall it feels really soft, if you have any guard hairs that are um, in there, it's going to feel prickly against your skin if you spin them into the yarn. Um, so uh, just get rid of them. So I'm not gonna do all this because I'm gonna turn the rest of this into punies because I really like the punies, but I think it's worthwhile just to see the other way to do it. Um, so I'm just gonna do this little bit here. Let's floof it and then I'll spin it. So what I've done is have some of my uh, cloud right here in my lap. Just take a, a clump of it, um, and you can put it in a little basket if you have a little basket. Um, I don't have that small of a basket, so I'm just going to put it on my uh, lap cloth here, uh, and uh, we'll get started. And I'm leaving everything the same. I have my uh, floofy end here uh, to uh, join with, and all I'm doing is just pulling out a, a clump here from the cloud, and I'm just going to put it in my hand and start spinning. You can see what I mean, how there's a little bit more nets. There's already one there. Um, but uh, it's not terrible. I just didn't love it. It's not giving me the consistent spin that I want. But it's um, very easy to do and very quick. And if you don't have carters, it's a good way to go. But again, it's got a little more slub in it than I would like. And when you cart it, it kind of gets rid of that or at least most of it. And I'm eternally trying to get these slubs to smooth out. And we'll see, this is actually really thin. I don't even need to measure it. I know it's too thin. <laughs> I don't even have to put the sample up next to it, but that is super thin, so I don't want it that thin. And you can also see it's a lot less regular than um, when I spun from the uh, puny. Well, we'll take another clump of this here and just keep uh, doing it for a little bit. And then I'm gonna finish up by uh, spinning from the uh, punies because I like them way better and they're a lot easier to spin from. If I'm going to be putting all this effort into this expensive fiber, I'm definitely going to um, want to do it the best way I can. And let's see how this does for us. If I'm getting a little thicker here. Yeah, that's more like a 32, but you can see all these little fluzzies stick in the back. I don't, I don't love that. And when you comb it, uh, I mean, when you uh, use the uh, wool combs, it's um, much nicer or the cotton combs that I use. And here is the uh, plyback test on this. And again, you can see the difference in the smoothness of the yarn. It's about the same size, um, but this one is just so much smoother. And this one has a lot of little, um, you know, neps or, or bits in it that I'm not, I don't actually want them for this. <laughs> I'm all about the Tweety Bits, don't get me wrong, but I just don't want them in this instance. And you can see how it's kind of fuzzier. So you can see that the one on the left is my sample that I did from the Puni. 
and the one on the right is the one that I'm spinning from the cloud. And there's um, just a, not, it's not as uh, uniform, doesn't look as, you know, professional uh, finished, you know, if I'm going to knit something with Kiviet, I want it to look nice. Uh, and then it's a little bumpy here. You can see there's some little, uh, like, fuzzy nep things, and I just don't really want that. So I'm going to uh, finish the rest of this, and I've already practiced uh, doing this from the cloud, and I learned pretty pretty fast that I didn't love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just finish this little bit in my hand, and then I'm going to go back to spinning from the uh, punis because I think that's what gives me the best result. And so you can spin Kiviet from the cloud, and that is absolutely one of the recommended ways to do it. Uh, but uh, I don't love it, so I'm going to stick with the punis. And I will uh, be back here to show you what this all looks like when I'm finished. I'm going to try to use my uh, Kromsky uh, Arch Lazy Cake that's tensioned for this. Um, they have a 3D printed one that goes with this. The uh, diameter of the bobbins fit onto it perfectly, uh, and it's basically the same size as my Kromsky bobbins. However, the actual um, ends of the bobbin here are wider than um, mine, and they hit each other if I have them side by side, and they're also hitting the wood down here. I'm gonna see if I can tolerate, I don't wanna damage my wood, but if I move it to just the right position, it won't hit. So we're gonna see how this goes. This is my first time plying with the, uh, the six. So uh, it's the same as plying with anything else. Uh, I am going to two-ply this and I have my leader attached. Uh, the things that are unknown for me is the uh, scotch tension. So I just need to be aware of what the draw is gonna be like. So right now I have it very loose because I want to see what's going to happen here. So clearly that is too loose. Let's tighten that a little bit because it needs to be enough to pull it onto the bobbin. Let's see if that does it for us. It's not quite plying the way I thought it would. Oh, I know why. <laughs> it's an e-spinner. Okay. I know exactly why. So that was a good learning experience because I do not think about plying very often um, with uh, direction because I always use my feet to change the direction. So you need to flip the button to make sure you're on S and I started plying the same direction, which is something I haven't ever done before. So uh, now we should be better. I'm gonna loosen some of this tension though now and uh, go from here and see. This should give us more what we want. Okay, I think we're up and running now. Just have to get used to the foot pedal and not a treadle. We can probably do a little bit more twist. There. Okay, let's see how this goes. So at least now it looks more like what it's supposed to look like here. Um, I actually like this. It's um, maybe got a touch too much twist in it. Let's measure the angle and see. It's kind of hard to see when it's all one color. And we are about 25, so I actually think that's going to be good. All right, let's continue on and see what we can do here. And everything else is the same. So when you're plying, you want your uh, fibers as parallel as you can get them. I usually go between my uh, thumb and index and index and long fingers for my fibers to run through. My um, front hand is just sort of smoothing the, the fiber along here. And I do have a couple little slubby things and I'm gonna try to pop those off when they come around. I don't want this to be a Tweety type of yarn. That looks good. Oh uh, yeah, that's nice. That is gonna be lovely. And again, when you have your tension set, um, I have it set so that it doesn't 
pull it out of my hand, but it doesn't take much for me to feed it onto the bobbin either. Um, I can kind of just push forward with either the whole unit, my hand, uh, my back hand and my front hand can push forward like that. Um, or I can, since this isn't too slippery, I can just kind of push it forward with my right hand. If you do that though, if you just use your right hand, sometimes you can slip and the fibers will kind of bunch up and, uh, and you'll have like a little weird wrapping thing. So just be aware, if you have slippery fiber, you should have both your hands go forward so you don't slip. Okay, now we are, uh, I think I have it dialed in. This looks lovely, look at this, look at that. Um, so I'm gonna compare that to this one. I think we've got it. So I'm going to keep on keeping on just like this. Here is the two ply on the bobbin here. So I think this is gonna work beautifully. All right. Here is the final Kiviet yarn. Uh, here is the uh, sample, the leftover from my uh, commercial yarn. And I just wanted to uh, show you here, and I'll undo this skein so we can look at it together, but look at it. I think we've done a good job here. And here, I think you can see that we have done an excellent job of matching the uh, overall uh, WPI, which is a, a light fingering weight. Uh, even the, um, the twist is also very, very similar. And uh, let's see if we can find some other stuff here. There's a couple of them that are a little bit bigger, but not by much. It looks really good. And uh, I have to tell you, this is light and soft as air. It is amazingly soft. We'll have to get my thumb out of the picture because I burned it. Here we go. Let's do the, ugly, the, the not ugly thumb. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, so very soft and airy. Um, I have to say this was just beautiful, this Kiviet, and I got it from uh, the Miller Sisters Luxury Yarns, and wow, I will definitely uh, order from them again. This was um, the first raw fiber that I had ordered from them, uh, and I'm very happy. And again, the Kiviet is a very uh, pricey luxury yarn that I have only ever worked with once and that was this commercial yarn so this was my first time uh spinning it and it went really well and it was easy to work with it was just a dream so uh miller uh, girls luxury fibers uh, on a facebook group and uh, it was wonderful uh, so i'm going to uh, turn this into a cow and uh, hopefully you'll see it by the fall <laughs> um i make no promises uh because uh the uh, tour de fleece is coming up and I am going to be spinning like a crazy person soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, until next time, spin happy.